Hi everybody, it is April and I am in my craft room and today we are going to make a t-shirt quilt. I have a 1999 Yukon. Love my Yukon. The door wouldn't open. The handle, you'd pull it, no open. We took it to my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law can fix anything, anything. So he and my husband, Todd, fixed the door. And when my husband said, how much do I owe you? He said, well, how about a quilt? And I thought, well, uh, I can do that. And then he handed me a giant pile of t-shirts. And that is where this part of the story begins. I've never made a t-shirt quilt before. And there's a lot of pressure when you're trying to make someone a quilt and it's your first time making it. So, I was on the phone with my friend Di from Sister Chicks. Hi Di. Just sitting here sewing. And Di shared with me how to make the perfect t-shirt quilt. So, I'm going to share that with you. I'm also going to link to Di's video in the description where she goes through several examples of t-shirt quilts that she's made. Now you're probably wondering, what is our theme? Our theme is NASCAR. And I have all kinds of NASCAR shirts. The thing about NASCAR, these designs are huge, huge. Look at that. That is a whole, that's a whole t-shirt. And guess what? There's more on the back. Look at that. So this is going to be interesting. But based on Di's suggestion, I think I have a plan. So I am going to cut out what I need of the t-shirt and actually extra on the side, which is what Di told me to do. And then we'll take a couple rulers, different sizes. We will audition which size looks best. The tools that you are going to need are of course your t-shirts. A good pair of sharp scissors, a couple rulers, so that when I get to the point where I don't have to use my scissors, well, then I can use my rotary cutter. This Pelon 906F fusible. So these stabilizers have a fusible on them so that I can attach them to the shirts. So this is more of a normal t-shirt that you're gonna deal with. I'm going to cut it up the side. I am filleting t-shirts. Okay, and then I do want the front, but I'm gonna set that aside for a minute. Here I have three rulers. I have a 12 and a half inch, I have a 15 inch, and I have a 16 and a half inch. The 15 inch would be perfect. Take a marking pen. Let's see if this works. I don't know if it will or not. And I'm going to go around the edge. And I would think anything that you want to use, this part is not going to show, you could use. And here's where I can use my rotary cutter and my ruler. I'm just going to go along the line where I drew. Again, this is not going to be seen by the person who is receiving this quilt if you're making it for somebody else. This is just a starting point.
All right. So this other part, this is white and it's a pretty dingy white, even if I do say so myself. But if you had t-shirts that were different colors, you might want to hold on to your excess t-shirt fabric until you're done with your quilt. Because if there are other colors, you might need some of those colors to fill in some spaces when you're using the smaller portions of the shirt. For this portion of the quilt, you will need a pressing cloth because you are going to be adding stabilizer to your t-shirt so that it's not flimsy like this. Dye recommends a handy wipe. I don't have a handy wipe. So I have this tea towel that was down here because I was gonna do something with it. And I thought, well, let's see how this works. You'll need an iron, a hot iron, and you will need your stabilizer. The side that you want on the wrong side of your t-shirt is the side that feels bumpy. The side that feels smooth is not the side that has the glue. The way that Di did it was she laid the t-shirt down face down and then took her stabilizer, laid it on top with the bubbly side or the gritty side down. And then that way she could tell that she was covering the area that she needed to. You want to use a pressing cloth because the finish on your t-shirt, you know, when you feel a t-shirt, especially like this, where it's, I'm sure it's paint, but you don't want that to melt. So use your pressing cloth to protect the t-shirt that's going in your quilt. My cordless iron was not hot enough. I don't know how long I would have had to press in order to get a good hold. It doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily because it's cordless, it's probably because it's an old iron and it only keeps its heat for so long. Now I do need to make sure that the middle is pressed because I'm going to cut this. And as soon as I don't make sure there's some heat on the center, I could have a problem with it lifting off once I cut the edges. There is my pressed t-shirt. And now instead of being flimsy, it's got some, some uh, structure to it. You know what would work well with this? A heat press. And I have a heat press. This seems like a faster way to get the stabilizer adhered to the back of the shirt. You do not have to use a heat press. A lot of people use irons. Not everybody has a heat press in their repertoire. So let me finish pressing the rest of these and we'll get on with this t-shirt quilt. Now I'm going to cut it down to the size that I want to use for my t-shirt quilt. So I am going to lay my ruler on top. I'm using a 15 inch ruler and I want to get this centered as much as possible. Or, you know, maybe I don't want to center it, but I want to cut it down to the size that I need. So this t-shirt is ready to go. Now all I need to do is all the other t-shirts. I've run into a little challenge and thank goodness Oliver jumped up here to help me. This t-shirt is not cut the right way <laughs> to allow me to allow me to center this image. So I know that this shirt also has a front that has a signature on it that matches this back. First I need to figure out how big I can make this and then I can cut this based on that. So let's, let's do this. Let's first see how much this image, how much room this image is going to take. And this is about 10 and a quarter. If I can make 
this 5 by 15, then I can just attach it to the side of the block. So I can cut this down to 10 and a quarter, and then this would be 5, which once sewn on would make it 15. I envision it somewhat like this. And here we have our block. So I have all of these shirts that have this little square or little lapel, I guess, design. So what I plan on doing is I want to cut those out and what I can do is I can cut them out at seven and a half inches. And then if I have four, that makes a block. Okay, I have my white stack and my black stack with a navy blue. I'm hoping that I'll be able to do black, white, black, white, black, white. We'll just have to see how it goes. So let's go to the design wall and get this up on the wall. I'm really excited. And I'll show you a couple of the blocks that I put together. All right, four across, five down. what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that blue block with this white because the theme of the quilt is black and white check. And I have some black and white check fabric. So when I get done putting this all together, we're going to add the cornerstones. And then I also have this NASCAR fabric that I can put as a border. So don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. My quilt top is complete. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit nervous because this is the first t-shirt quilt that I've made. But with Di's help, I think I did a pretty good job. I hope that you all are able to take some of the tips and tricks from this video and maybe make your own t-shirt quilt. I'm pretty excited. I think I'm gonna get all my Hard Rock Cafe t-shirts together and make one of these guys. So I do want to thank everybody who commented on my blue and white quilt. It was really, fun to read all of the comments and suggestions as far as how to finish it. I was also a little surprised. I have some OCD people out there. Those half diamonds, they, I got a lot of comments about people are like, I'd have to finish that. I would have to do, add a row on each side or on the side and on the bottom to finish out those diamonds. I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, also, I wanted to say K Sharp. She asked me what I did with all my finished quilts. And if I had finished quilts, I would give them to Project Linus and nursing homes and other charities that need quilts. I have not had the time to finish all the quilt tops that I've made. I've finished some and those normally go to friends or family. And then I have made one for a friend for her mother. But, I don't have the opportunity to finish all of them as quickly as I would like. That's one of my New Year's resolutions is to finish more quilts so that I can give them away. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, eat some chocolate, and be kind to everyone. Until next time, bye. I have a chocolate tasting.
So my friend Tiffany is from Idaho Falls and this chocolate bar was from Idaho Falls and it's made with Marion Berry. Never heard of Marion Berry. Here's a picture. So this is the second time I've had to shoot this because I didn't have sound last time so I get to eat another piece of chocolate. Let me tell you, it's good. Hold on. I had it broken before. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Mm. It's milk chocolate. It's really good. Look at how thick that bar is. Mmm, yummy. It's heavy too. It doesn't taste quite like a raspberry chocolate, but it has that kind of fruity flavor. Thank you, Tiffany. Hmm, very good. Until next time, bye. Bill, what is the word I am looking for? And Oliver is going to be my ruler weight. Ow! Hey! Stop. For some reason, my husband, whenever I am filming, he just so happens to be walking on the floor above wherever I'm filming. How he knows that I'm filming and that we're gonna hear the squeaky floors, I have no idea. It's a gift.